Hi-Fi-Man's original HE6 has somewhat of a legendary status in the headphone community. And indeed, this is also somewhat true for the rest of Hi-Fi-Man's lineup. But the original HE6 was released what is probably around seven or eight years ago now. And so it was time for an updated version. The overall design of the HE6 SE looks very similar to that of the Sundara. The only thing we see that's been carried over from the original AG6 is the mesh grill design, whereas the grill on the Sundara has more of a chain link design. The other noticeable difference is with regards to the weight. Whilst the AG6 SE is 32 grams lighter than the original AG6, it's still nearly 100 grams heavier than the Sundara. This means that you have to size it just right in order to avoid having all the weight centered on the headband, which would subsequently create a hotspot during longer listening sessions. The headband does create a bit more clamping force than what I would like, but of course your mileage might vary. If I were to purchase these for myself, I would perhaps stretch it out just a bit to give a little more comfort, but it'll probably loosen up over time anyways. The only place where we can see that plastic has been used is where the headband adjustment system meets the rest of the spring steel headband. I do feel that given the substantial price gap between the Sundara and the HE6 SE, hi fi really should have done something more premium here. There is a little bit of creaking when slightly twisting the cups, but I won't say that it feels cheap to me. But still, there surely could have been a more premium approach to this part. The only other area of slight concern for me is with the grill. Uh, we can move these around just ever so slightly. Now, they don't rattle around if you shake the headphones, but I can't help but wonder if they might introduce some slight rattling when playing music. Perhaps not so much that you'd be able to pinpoint the issue, but perhaps just enough to have a slight effect. Who knows? Now, open back designs are probably the most well-loved headphone designs in the uh, premium audio world. But one of the unfortunate downsides to an open back design is that because your ears aren't isolated from the outside, not all of the sound energy is directed towards the listener. As a result, what you'll find is that an open back set of cans will require more power to get to the same volume as a closed back set of headphones with equivalent impedance and sensitivity figures. So if we look at the specifications, we'll see that the HE6 SE has the same listed specifications of 50 ohm impedance and an efficiency of 83.5 decibels per volt as the original HE6. That impedance of 50 ohms really isn't very high. So at first glance, you might think that the HE6 SE would be pretty easy to drive. But the more important figure is the sensitivity and efficiency. Unfortunately, it seems that manufacturers simply can't make up their minds with regards to whether to list sensitivity or efficiency figures. For the most part, headphones and IEMs are usually listed with a decibel per milliwatt figure, whereas hi fi provides a decibel per volt figure for the HE6 SE. It's perhaps even possible that they did this intentionally to make it seem like the HE6 SE is easier to drive than what it actually is. And they did the same thing for the original HE6 too. Now, often we'll see people quoting impedance figures as some sort of indication of how hard a particular set of headphones might be to drive. However, in reality, the impedance figure doesn't actually tell you much on its own. For example, we could pretty easily work out that a headphone that has an impedance of 2000 ohms and rated at 86.5 decibels per milliwatt would require the same amount of power to get to a certain volume level as what would be required by the 50 ohm impedance and 70.5 decibel per milliwatt of the HE6 SE. So is impedance important? Well, sure it is, but it's not as indicative of the power requirements as the sensitivity or efficiency figures. But I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on this matter. Do you think that the impedance figure is still even just somewhat of a good indication? Or do you agree that the rated sensitivity and efficiency is far more telling? Let me know down in the comments section. Also, if you've liked this video so far, go ahead, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do consider clicking on that subscribe button too. So when we consider the open back design, along with the low sensitivity of the drivers, we can see that the HE6 SE would indeed require a pretty substantial amount of power. 
In fact, Hyferman recommends that you use an amplifier of at least 2 watts per channel. Now, I found this to be quite spot on, as I had to run them on my Micro IDSD Black Label on its normal power setting, which is capable of delivering up to 1.9 watts. And for some music, I did turn the volume pot all the way up. But really, where it sounded like I had hit the sweet spot was when I put the Black Label in its turbo power setting. This is capable of producing quite a bit more power than what would be needed by the HS6SE, but it sometimes proved quite useful in making the Hyferman sound its best. Now, as you might expect, the HS6SE does have a removable cable design, and it uses a 3.5mm connection for each channel. If you're a fan of XLR connections, you'll be happy to know that the cable is terminated with an XLR connection. But we also do get an adapter to convert it to a more common quarter inch single ended connection. Unfortunately, this means that you would need yet another adapter if you want to use the HS6SE with a source device that has a regular 3.5mm output. But given just how power hungry these cans are, the chances are that all of the amps that have enough juice to throw at this particular headphone will have a quarter inch connection anyway. So in terms of the sound, the HE6SE follows what has become a pretty typical Hyperman signature, and judging from the fact that the impedance and sensitivity specs are the same for the original HE6, there's a good chance that it'll sound pretty similar to the original too. Although I should add that this is not something that I can really state as a fact, since I've neither listened to nor had the chance to measure the original HE6. So what we do get is a pretty flat response between the bass and sub bass region with a slightly elevated presence in the mids. There's a steady climb from around 2kHz up to a sharp peak at 4kHz. This peak can sometimes be a little bothersome and I found it to be particularly true when listening to Daft Punk's Doing It Right where the clap sounds came across as just a bit too forward and distracting for my taste. But when I lowered this region within the EQ, it did become less bothersome. But then again, this isn't something that I can say that I constantly found to be bothersome, so I wouldn't count it as an inherent flaw. Also, our brains have an amazing ability to adapt to our surroundings, and so if your current headphones already tend to have a little bit of a mid-forward signature, then there's a good chance that your brain would have filtered out that characteristic already. In which case, that upper mid-range spike of the HE6SE would probably go unnoticed to you. Further along the frequency response, we have a few more dips and spikes, but nothing in particular that stands out as being problematic to me. That slight spike at 10kHz does seem to give a bit more shimmer to cymbals, which is quite pleasant. I did notice that they didn't sound quite as wide as I had anticipated, but this might be partly due to the fact that I was also reviewing the HE1000SE, so that might have had an influence here. But the depth sounded pretty good to me, as did the instrument separation within the sound field. It's still wider than regular closed back headphones anyways. Overall, the HE6SE offers an agreeable sound signature, provided of course that you've got an amp that can throw enough power at it. So at the end of it, judging the value of the HE6SE is pretty much going to depend on what other equipment you already have. Honestly, if your headphone amp isn't capable of delivering more than 2 watts of power to these cans, then you'll really be wasting your time, in my opinion. There are very few headphones that really require me to switch my IDSD Black Label into turbo power mode, but the HE6SE absolutely demanded it, and even then I had to turn the volume knob all the way up to the 2 o'clock position. So, what this means is that if you don't have a particularly powerful amp, then you might end up needing to factor in the additional cost of an appropriate amp as well if you do decide to get the HE6SE. This just is an unfortunate but nevertheless inevitable side effect of using ultra-low sensitivity headphones. But if you do already have a headphone amp that can provide adequate power, then I think the HE6SE offers a very respectable sound character and so could well prove to be a healthy upgrade over something like the Ananda and perhaps even the Edition X V2. Well, that brings us to the end of this review. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked it, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. That's all from me for now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.